4.3 Mixed and Entire Radicals I should start out by going through the differences between an entire radical and a mixed radical. I'm going to put a bunch of radicals in each column, and the two across from each other will represent the same number, but one will represent it as an entire radical, and the other one will represent it as a mixed radical. So each radical represents the same number, but there are two different ways of writing it. And at times it's better to write it as an entire radical, and at times it's better to write it as a mixed radical. In an entire radical, all of the numbers are in the radicand. They're inside the radical, and the coefficient is 1. Same thing here. All inside the radicand, and the coefficient is 1. Keep in mind, we don't count the index as part of it. And same thing here. It's all inside the radicand, including the variables. Whereas we go over on a mixed radical, we can count this as simplified. We've taken what we can out of the radicand and put it in front as a coefficient. So this is the primary difference. So any time you've got a coefficient in front, you've got a mixed radical. If the only coefficient you've got in front is a 1, you've got an entire radical. And in this video, we're going to go through how to go back and forth between entire radicals and mixed radicals. First step. Let's simplify radicals. Now in reality, this is just turning entire radicals into mixed radicals. Let's start with this one. Let's take the square root of 63. Now in this class, we want to work with exact numbers. So I'm not asking you to pull out your calculator and take the square root of 63 and write down that decimal. That's going to be approximate, because someplace, somewhere, somehow, you're going to have to round it off. And that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for it to be exact. When we're working with radicals, the index is a very important part. Now, because there is no number written in the index, we assume in this case that the index is 2. What we move on to next is we're going to do the prime factorization of that radicand. All right, I'm going to write it out with all those numbers inside the radical. Now, as we go back to look at that index, because my index is 2, I want to take factors out of that radical in groups of 2. So I look here, I've got one group of 2. Those 3 is the only thing I've got a pair, and I'm going to pull those out. All right, I've got one group of 3s, so I'm going to pull a 3 out as a coefficient of the radical. I'm going to draw my root sign. Don't forget to put the index in, unless it's a 2. And I'm going to write all the leftovers still inside the radical. There's my simplified radical, and I would read it as 3 root 7. Let's simplify another radical. I want you to notice that this time we have an index of 3. Start with prime factorization. Now let's write it out as a product of its prime factors. Next step. Pull out factors in groups the size of your index. My index is 3, so I'm looking for groups of 3. I've got three threes there. There's one group. I don't have enough twos to make a group of three, so they're going to be stuck left inside that radical. I can rewrite this question as, i got one group of threes, so I'll put a three down there. I'm going to remember to put my index in there. That never changes. And then two times two, because that's what's left. Put those factors in the radicand together. My final answer is three times the third root of four. One more time. Prime factorization. Rewrite it as a product of its prime factors. Our index is 2, so I've got nothing written there. So I'm going to take things out in groups of 2. We've got two fives. There's one factor coming out. And I've got a second group of fives. So that's another factor coming out. Let's rewrite that. First group of fives, I've got a factor of 5. Second group of fives, I've got a factor of 5 again. And those are going to be multiplied and my leftovers. Put those coefficients together. 5 times 5 is 25. My answer is 25 root 2.